beautiful. Beautiful. Little bit of drift, little bit of drift. Look at that side slip there. Sri Lankan. Oh! Oh, good this! See that? Wind it back if you can, if you want to. I think this is double. Can you double depress during the live, Jelly? Like double tap for uh, to, to wind it back 25 seconds. And look for the uh, look for the big puff of brake dust coming out of those brake uh, out of those. Where's is she live? Slats are extended. Am I going to be too dark then? Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome to Big Jet TV. Uh, you are more than welcome. Sit back, relax, enjoy the next four or so hours. Uh, runway 27 right, departures into arrivals, um, which is kind of what happens every day. Uh, at three o'clock on the hour, uh, every day. Um, sometimes a little bit earlier recently, it has to be said. Um, but we get some great shots of the aircraft starting up, pushing back, starting up, coming out of T5, coming across from T4, uh, pushbacks here, just about here, that 777 firing up now. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, yeah, like I say, sit back, enjoy it. Uh, and Jilly is your host for the day. Uh, well, your technical host. Not ghost. I did see just now uh, someone on, on chat is going to be able to uh, answer this and um, it's uh, it's amazing how people well I mean they've got the uh, the beauty of Google in it oh Phil Sky's gonna go and pu purchase the soup the super guppy the Super Guppy, because we showed the Guppy, didn't we? Because obviously I didn't mention that after the Guppy came the Super Guppy when the aircraft got bigger and there was more need for, for, uh, for, um, I missed that, whatever that was. Um, but, um, yeah, hope you all enjoyed the show on, uh, on Friday night. Stand by. Stig Aviation. Oh, look at the little thing. So this is a CEO with fence-style winglets. I don't know what what did that. See that wing. 
long lit there folks that's the fence style winglet which is uh, a gin a ginormous a ginormous a ginormous uh, variant of it is on this a380 um, as you can see there um, we we did mention on the show that um, somebody actually brought it to us our attention whilst we were live that's the fence style winglet um, the sharklet winglet um, which is either a, a retrofit or a, a factory fit one of the two but apparently both um, on the uh, uh, both neos and ceos are um there's been a um a notice for uh, for um for inspection for hairline cracks apparently um not not up by the winglet which is quite surprising I, I, the, the, the winglet itself because of the the additional aerodynamic features of it it must put more stress on other parts of the wing maybe because I can't understand why it is around the what they call the manhole inspection uh, covers underneath the wing of these jets there if you if you walk underneath the wing of an of a jetliner like this you'll see um, these what look like manholes literally um, sort of like square versions of them or oblong versions of them it depends on the aircraft type but um, they um, they are inspection uh, 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 panels that, that can be taken off and components can be inspected through that uh, inside the wing um, and also there are access panels in there as well if people need to get inside the wing believe it or not people you can get inside the wing uh, of, of one of these ginormous jets um, but uh, and certainly inside the A380 that's for sure but um, so I'm not I'm completely understanding of uh, why the uh, why the cracks would be in those points rather than sort of like uh, up by the wing itself, up by, up by the, 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 the outer part of the wing, you know, the end of the wing, the wing towards the wing tip. Um, CPR looks like we're about to get at least six consecutive heavy departures. Awesome. One of those being the A380. They're using quite a lot of power today, I have to say. Um, it's either that or it's just because it's such still conditions. It's um, it's really sort of like exaggerating another Ferrari bus, which we're going to have to contend with today. Uh, Air India, big uh, talking point during the on-air show as well. Uh, I have to say, having looked at it side-on now, that new Air India livery, I can live with it. You know what I mean? I, 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 it's not that bad. It was just the angle that we were looking at it from at Toulouse that uh, that sort of like put us off. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so all A320 CEOs and NEOs with sharklets are under investigation. Fog and attack. to the extra pressures of lift and fall of the wing causing stress. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, maybe the sharklets cause more stretch of the wing. That's a good point, Matt. Uh, I did mention that the aerodynamics ca cause more stress, but that stress, what he's talking about, is when you see the aircraft, um, as it gathers speed, you'll see the wing uh, pick up flex, and that is um, noticeable even on the uh, the small jets even on the CEOs uh, believe it or not um, very noticeable uh, Rohit Parkal Jerry I've been meaning to ask about the BEA Trident flight 548 that crashed in Stains Bond Thames 72 was it anywhere close to your home no Rohit um, quite some distance actually um, 
went out of either 27 left or 27 right um, just based on the trajectory the the turn of it I'm gonna say 27 right but I might be complete in fact I tell you what back in those days runway 23 was in operation so there's a already flexing but uh, at the V1 point at the rotate point uh, you'll see it really flex up as the aircraft as the front end goes up you'll see the wing flex massively there it is and that could be what we're talking about in terms of see how long the Dreamliner takes on its takeoff roll um, that's just down to the um, the specifics oh, oh blimey look at this where's he going Jilly oh this should be good There was there was one there was a there was a cross runway uh, intersecting. It wasn't 23, no. Okay. 28, right, okay. Not. Is that is that uh, is that a scheduled flight or is that off for maintenance? I don't know. She looks quite heavy. She's definitely not going up early, so uh, it's going to JFK, is it? Wow. Just showing off, isn't it? Awesome, mate. Absolutely awesome. That was proper. Love to see her. A 380 go out from that point. Um, yeah, maybe 28, runway 28. Go on in, son. Oh. Only just the slightest little pull up now. Look at this. Pratt and Whitney powered 777 200 with United Airlines. They just had a General Electric G90 powered jet go out, United. Quite rare, I have to say. Here we go. Houston, thank you, sir. Oh, there was a runway 23. That was for Power Martin Smith, Beverly George, Andy P, Phil Sky, Paul Skilling, Yonar Benemi. This is G90. Uh, I don't know, was it Yonar? I thought that was a Pratt and Whitney powered jet. Just seen a um. Just check that. Would you? Just check that. Is that a, is that a, a G Power Jet? Simon Harding. Yeah. 
pretty sure. Air India! Oh, it was G90, my apologies, thank you. Wow. Where's all the Pratt's gone then? Shame we keep missing his dad, it is aviation. Literally crossing paths. Here we go, boys and girls. Get ready for this. Oh yeah! WHI BWIA TriStar British West Indian Airlines Simon Morris, good morning to you. Okay, so aviation in 4K's dad's going out to Orlando. He's a virgin, isn't he? He's virgin, isn't he? Got um. Oh, that's not going to make it. No, no, no. He needs to be. He needs to be on time. Big turn. Oh, missed that. Missed that. Still a bit of drift. Direct southerlies coming towards. Direct southerlies. Um, it's actually a southwesterly at the moment, but um, sorry, bit. Oh, bit of a uh, bit of a funky shot going on there. Nice. Right about now. <laughs> Flaps and slats. Yeah. Oh, there's another one I missed. Okay, anything coming from the west, GP? Uh, sorry, from the east. Cousins, uh, flight crew going out to BA to Bermuda this afternoon, or with BA to Bermuda this afternoon, Dick Cousins saying. Debash mode.
Olivia Ray that was um, Sarah Louise same Olivia Ray is the daughter of one of the um, ground crew who unfortunately um, lost his life whilst at work I believe or overseas wasn't it or something he wasn't actually on on duty but um, they named one of their aircraft after her after his daughter which is a wonderful gesture lovely thing to do man it's what um, You're safe to fly, mate. Talking about the IAE engines um, during the uh, during the show. Not just, I thought it was just um, a couple of um, um, engine manufacturers that were involved in the original development of that engine, but more than more than um, more than two. That's for sure. Japanese firm, uh, Pratt and Whitney, Rolls Royce. I think Rolls Royce, um, if I'm right, in saying. Um, were responsible for the the um, low pressure end of the engine, I believe. Clive Clark, no missing the Rolls Royce engines. Andrew Marriott, J Mank, Andrew Marriott. I know it's not, but it looks so slow. Is that him talking about the? Um, the speed at which they go past us. Well, they're picking up speed, aren't they? They're doing around about a, um, 80, 90 knots by the time they come past us. Maybe a little bit faster, I don't know, but um, I'd say about 90 knots, something like that. Um, obviously, the rotate speed somewhere in the region of 140 to 160, something like that. John Urquhart has gifted in a membership. Thanks, John. Shane Link, Trent One Fairs, uh, Eric Teeder. Uh, BA777 on its way to Cardiff. Um, which one's that? Um, which one's that, GP? BA777 on its way to Cardiff. Is it lined up? Is it the next one going? After this little 320. Yeah, okay, so this is going to Cardiff, folks. This is off to Cardiff, um, the maintenance division of um, British Airways. So that could be going down there for, uh, you know, an, uh, a, 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 an A check. I mean, she's quite an old bird, I think. Um, you know, uh, I shouldn't really say that. I don't know if she is or not, but it could be a, a C check, could B check, D check, whatever. Um, but she's empty, put it this way. She's 10 years old, so she's not that old. So she wouldn't be in D, D check territory yet, I don't think. Sarah Louise, Eliza Doolittle. There's a, there's a um, proper intersection. Look at that. So an intersection departure is usually performed when the aircraft's light or um, just the basic parameters that are put into the flight management computer once all that's calculated you know it, it tells you how much uh, runway you need um, and uh, based on that they decided on this intersecting point called departure Brian Tinker the BA facility in Cardiff was called Project Dragonfly when it was constructed early 90s. Wow, Brian, thank you. Great uh, piece of information. Down at uh, a, the Aviation Retail Direct yesterday, um, literally got stuck there talking to a load of um, fellas about, about planes. Um, one of whom was um, back in the day a, an engineer uh, here at Heathrow on the VC-10s and Tridents, folks. How about that? And he was here on that day when, uh, or he was working here. He was, he was, he was a when the uh, I think it was a Brabazon. Was it a Brabazon that, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, carrying racehorses, I think, um, crashed on landing and uh, collided, careered into a. Here we go. Stand by.
don't think he's going to get much above 10,000 feet, is he? Uh, Aviation in 4K was the first to mention that going to CWL earlier on. I, uh, sorry, I didn't. Um, he, uh, sorry, I didn't mention it earlier on Aviation in 4K. Thank you. Oh, look, it's a squirrel. <laughs> Has been gifted a membership. Nice bit of drift. What a bruiser, Nick Gray. Fox and B. CPR quick, as I expected. Back on the throttles already. 350 firing up. Ooh! Oh! He's like, look at me, look at me. XWBs, man. But they're quite smoky. Watch this. Strong smell of Jet A. Natalie Achille, uh, uh, Achille, uh, Achillina. Um, sorry, Natalie. 45 minutes to Cardiff. 45 minutes to Cardiff. Aquilina, sorry. Fastest fun. Good day to you, Jason Moran. Uh, we won't have been. A, oh, won't have been a Brabazon. The Brabazon only flew once and then it was scrapped. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was. Um, oh, what was it? Not a Brabazon. Um, oh, they used them for freight, didn't they? Nigel Warren, that 350's brand new, he said. More Trent power. 7,000s. That's the one I flew to Miami on, isn't it, Eliza Doolittle? Or was it coming back? I can't remember. Coming back. Out there on Billy Holiday, that was it. An ambassador, Michael Skip saying, there we go, it was an ambassador carrying those racehorses. Um, obviously a, uh, a travesty, um, a tragic incident. But what is also key about that incident with the, um, with the ambassador was that it actually, when it, when, it, when it lost control, it skidded into a big line of tridents. Um, I don't know if any of the tridents were actually written off, but one of the tridents that it hit um, actually was the trident that was involved in the Staines crash. Um, and it had nothing, it was, it, there was no relation to it whatsoever. That was a, a pilot related incident in terms of, um, you know, um, ex-bomber command um, pilot as they were back then, you know, um, um, potentially um, older sort of like generation pilots um, very strict stiff upper lip kind of thing um, being sort of like with a load of youngsters all um, you know uh, really really interesting
Ian Edwards lives in Derby. I think all the Rolls Royce engines are named after the after rivers, aren't they? Apart from the XWB, well, Trent, the Trent family of engines, isn't it? David Mead now mesmerised looking for brake dust on every single departure. Bit of a uh, funky shot going on there. This is an A320 Neo, or is it a 21? I'm not sure, I can't see yet. Soon find out. 320. 321. No, 320, sorry. <laughs> Now we believe that uh, Virgin Atlantic have an operation today going out to, was it Madrid, Jelly? Or, no, Milan Malpensa, okay, which is a, quite a, a, a busy freighter hub. Um, it was on Flight Radar 24. Hello, okay, coming from the uh, GP, coming from the west. That looks pretty decent. This is very peculiar that I can't see that. Oh, this is. Swiss 777, yeah? Wow, look at that, folks. Crazy how slow it looks that you're travelling when you look down on the ground, and yet, uh, and yet they travel so fast up there, man. Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah, the river RB211. Yeah, it flows between. Um... <laughs> The Avon engine as well, as a military uh, application, I believe. The river, the, the Rolls-Royce Avon. Um, Rolls Barnoldswick, wow, love it. Very famous engine. One that actually, the Rolls-Royce RB211, actually um, kind of saved the 747 program uh, from sort of like disappointment, let's say, because of the Pratt & Whitney engine. The early Pratt & Whitney's were very, very unreliable. Uh, big overheating issues. Jackie VC is a new member. I think I've pronounced that right, Jackie. Hopefully I have. A very warm welcome to you, a brand new member. Jackie gonna be joining us in Liège um, in the coming weeks, folks. First um, February um, show is gonna be, overseas show with our members, is going to be f in, in Liège. See, that's what people, some people don't actually know. Uh, about the fact that we actually travel overseas and uh, it's a bit of a bonus for a lot of people. They're like, oh really? Oh, go on in. Fire it up!
J-Mank. Yes, they were very explodey, weren't they? Uh, overheating issues, I think, with the early Pratt & Whitney's on the 747. And it just so happened that the Rolls-Royce delegate were travelling with Her Majesty the Queen um, and they met with Boeing whilst they were out in America just to let them know that they've got this great new engine, the RB211s. The Americans were like, oh my God, really? Okay, well, uh, let's get it tested on the jumbo. And it's like, yeah, sure. And that's, uh, that's history, literally. That is how it all um, transpired that the uh, Rolls-Royce RB211 became a very popular uh, platform until later on, of course, um, when the, um, the CF6, the General Electric power plant came along, Pratt & Whitney sorted out their issues, but I think that was it, you know. I don't think the Pratt & Whitney's, obviously, uh, other than on the, um, you know, early generation jets that, um, did they retrofit the RBs? I wonder, I wonder. Philip Jones has gifted a membership, thank you, Philip. Uh, we're gonna get maybe a smart, uh, smoky start up with his 767 with the United States. Rolls Royce Pegasus is the hang. EK29 incoming just over my house. Number three on flight radar, Kathy Williams saying. Simon Mason is a new member, welcome. Adam the Great. Ian Goldsworthy, is there an evening show tonight? What, are you trying to kill me? Um, Trev Lyon, Beverly George. Hope you all enjoyed the um, the on-air show, by the way. It's getting better and better in terms of its delivery. And, uh, um, well, put it this way, Jilly did a lot of it in terms of the, um, the the technical stuff, which made things run a lot smoother than than the last time, the previous shows. But I think it's all going quite well. Uh, Jimmy G61, uh, good afternoon to you. Beautiful day for beautiful aircraft from Heathrow. Katrina. Diane 78, Michael Kate, great shots of the brake dust today. Uh, yes, there you go. Some aircraft are going through long taxis like this 777-200 that's, uh, that's just lining up. Uh, it's about three, three in the queue for, um, for American Airlines. Um, we'll check that. All depends on the length of taxi, really, or if it's uh, running an old set of brake pads. <laughs> Greg Dillon. Yeah, Liège is a new one for us, folks. James Doink, Andy P, Steph Raptor X, uh, Jason Moran. Good day to you. Oh, look at that. Nicholas Thomas has gifted 10 memberships. Thank you, Nicholas. Very kind of you. PGS Panda is a returning member. Welcome back, PGS and Jack. Hamblin is a brand spanking new, organically grown uh, member. Thank you, Jack, and a very warm welcome. Uh, somebody, just out of curiosity, um, uh, uh, did some research into how many long-term members we have. Obviously, we have you know thousands of, of members, but in terms of um, folks who've been with us for uh, for you know their gold stars and platinum stars and all and red stars and all that kind of thing, it's just a lot of you. Um, I, I just can't say thank you enough to everybody who's been with us for all those years. But really, why would you want to go anywhere else? You know, because of the fact that we give so much back uh, to our to our paying members. Um, kind of makes sense, doesn't it? But uh, thank you, everybody, each and every one of you. We really appreciate it. Gary Boak's Cafe 747 was due at 2.45. Now delay estimated at 4.35. So after the switch over, interesting, I can see that Emirates 380 in the distance uh, on its way in, Rab H. John Grinham. Uh, Mr. Rigsby, uh, Golf Alfa Romeo, um, oh interesting, here's the little, uh, little Joey. Golf Alfa Romeo Papa Tango was written off in the crash, uh, the incident that we were discussing just now about uh, I think that was landing on the runway that crosses there. So, Nicholas Thomas loved seeing the beluga. Lenny Pasiglia. 
Oh look, it's Squidel. Loads of flu Phil Philip Jones. EGPX, one of the things that came off it. CRM was another, it was likely non-existing. John Grinham, Lee Shand, um, Helen Clapp, Shamrock 105, Todd Greenwell, Carl Roller. RB2LM was originally developed for the Lockheed Trite. Yes, it was. That's right, he's right. Um, that's very true. The RB2LM was developed for the TriStar. It was an exclusive engine on the TriStar, wasn't it? Zoe um, Deterding, uh, Deterding. Um, just uh, giving a shout out to Fumeva. Um, gifted their membership. Thank you, Zoe, for saying thank you. So with that one going out, kind of means we were talking about it yesterday Jilly um, saying that we had uh, I think four uh, A380s um, not including that BA jet I believe Jilly going out um, during the session boom if you've got any questions folks uh, you can always contact us at contact at bigjet.tv um, Please do it that way. Uh, I don't like Jilly being inundated with, uh, you know, stuff. Um, we obviously try and share it as much between each other as we can. She's going, you liar. <laughs> Gary Lyon, good afternoon. H. Uh, H, love the on-air show. Thank you, H. Good afternoon, all Sue Calder, uh, Scott Thompson, Avro Arrow, um, Darren 747 Steggles, a returning member. He's got a red star, you know. Uh, thank you, Darren, for your support, my friend. Leslie McIntosh is a brand new first class member. Welcome, Leslie. There we go. This is this should be good. Rolls Royce. Trent. Oh, go on, son. Adrian Magni, I think. Uh, is a new member, I think Adrienne or Adrienne or a Adrian. Thank you very much. Great to see you here. Welcome all new members. Thank you for your gifting. And um, yeah, Liège um, <coughs> first show in in, um, in February. February. Um, and then we're uh, then we're looking at um, then we're looking at uh, San Francisco, folks. We've been to San Francisco before, but um, it's sort of like, uh, let's go back. Why not? James Beeson is a returning member. Welcome back, James. Wow, this chat is going too fast, Jilly. Will W, Hong Kong is great for spotting on the hill next to the airport. Going up to the Buddha. The whole airport is viewable below, below you. However, cannot do streams. Oh, well. <laughs> That's interesting. So you can film there, take all your footage home with you, but you can't stream. That's a shame, isn't it? Lenny Pasiglia, raw Boeing, tough looking. Oh, we've got a four engine jet, GP. Yeah, from the east. A340, Suriname, wow! Now I'm going to stick my neck out and say that that, apart from the Lufthansa jets, is the only passenger 340 operational? Or am I wrong? It's got big Suriname written underneath it as well, as it? Oh yeah! Almost looks like uh, Air Belgium, doesn't it, in a funny sort of way? Yeah, there 
there she is folks look at that how cool is this camera man how cool is this camera little vx1 under 500 quid and you can pick an aircraft up from zero feet all the way up to 38 fares and feet Yeah, right. Oh, of course, yes, yeah, Swiss and Idlewise, my apologies. Yeah. Uh, da Pepper, Da Pepper. Um, I've been stationed in Liège during my military service when it was still a military airbase. Um, beer set. Uh, wow, how cool is that? Yeah, of course, Liège is new to us, folks. So I've, I've, I've got a quite um, a lengthy sort of like. Well, I've, I've got best part of half a day, haven't I, Jilly? For a recce. A recce in the age. Hungry bookworm. Glad to be back. Hungry bookworm. Always mem reminds me of that cutaway with Peter Griffin um, when he said he wishes he was a, 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 a strawberry. And a little worm comes in. Oh, you know, it's the worm. He starts, goes underneath and starts eating it. Well, you know what? Yeah, but honestly, this particular camera has been in operation for nearly two years now. And they don't break. Yes, I am, yeah. Yeah, I am, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, okay. Well, we had a problem, didn't we? Didn't we have a bit of fluff on the, on the lens or something that we, we, and I switched the cameras out? All the way to Perth, folks. for uh, Liège folks. So of course um, that aircraft have to, has to have two sets of crew on it. Um, you know, a rotating uh, cabin crew, uh, obviously a rotating... Um, uh, 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 I, I'd imagine it's got one, two, three, four, probably five pilots on board. Oh, seven six, here we go. Go on, Sam. Channel Russell, off to good weather. I can see it, I can see it, I can see it. What was that someone said about the quick panning, Jilly? Are they talking about me? Oh, right, I bleed and hope not. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Greg Dillon, at the risk of repeating myself, nice Coke d'Azur on the weekend of the Grand Prix would be an epic show. Okay, interesting. Um, another 340, folks. Oh, is she in the old livery? That's the, you can see the yellow crane on her tail. Oh, listen to that! Look at 
spooled that up nicely. I told you there'd be one coming out, didn't I, eh? Qantas have got them all. <laughs> yeah, that is an ongoing concern for all airlines around the world in terms of uh, pilot shortages. And um, in America, particularly pilot unions, isn't it? Um, uh, Inter-airline pilot unions, possibly. Um, but, um, you know, uh, certainly an ongoing issue for uh oh hello go on then son find that when the Rolls-Royce Ultra fan is um, is finally you know put through its paces and um, certified etc etc that uh, Lawrence Cope has gifted a membership thank you Lawrence uh, you'll find that the uh, the, um, the Rolls-Royce Ultra fan program Okay, the ultra fan, because the Trent is the last in the sort of like Rolls Royce family programs before the ultra fan program. Uh, the ultra fan is not related to the Trent because it obviously has. Um, oh, hello. Pushback. Um, has uh, carbon blades. And I think you'll find that that uh, 350 is going to be the platform that they're going to start re engineering. Um, with the um, with the ultra fan, but also put it in as an option for the triple seven X. We think this should be nice. This should be nice. So APU is already and has been running for uh, for quite some time. Pilots just uh, prepping the systems to. Uh, feed those engines with uh, bleed air from the or the I say this the engines the gearbox the systems start those engines turning are these also RB are they, are they sorry are these also GE's they look like Pratt and Whitney's to me look at the green sleeve inside the engine Shadow, um, yeah. It's growing on me. It's shadow. The uh, new air in the livery. Amy's gifted a membership. Thank you, Amy. Union Benemi is, uh, yeah, these are confirmed as Rolls Royce, uh, sorry, as Pratt and Whitney PW 4000s, thank you. PW 4090s on the United, Nick Gray, thank you. It's, uh, it is a big giveaway, the, uh, the, the green sleeve. The, um, it's a solid material. But um, but when it's uh, when it's impacted, it turns into almost like a like a like a fabric almost to catch any components. Oh, listen to this little Lufthansa go. Those 
those uh, Pratt and Whitney's or Leaps, whichever they are, sound like little little mini, um, you know, GE90s. Great sounds to them. It's Shadow, yeah, I agree. I love the air and the delivery too. I wasn't a big fan of it when we, you know, right up to the point when we were at, um, at um, Toulouse and saw the um, and saw the livery, but um, it was from an angle, so it, we didn't get a really good impression of it. Always favour the role, the old Lufthansa delivery over the new one. Put it that way. I'm not completely um, saying that the, uh, the, the the new one, or should I say, the revised one. It's a few years old now, isn't it? It looks like it's uh, like I said. Uh, I've always said it looks like it's been suited and booted. It's on its way to an interview, whereas the old one's sort of like you know. Jill Watkins, that f Lufty three. 20 off to Frankfurt. We've got uh, Dustin Jackson, who's gifted a membership. Thank you. Chris Davies is a returning member. Welcome back, Chris. Is she, uh, she turning her engines? I can't see, folks. You're going to make a run for it, Jilly. Uh, James Beatwell. Um, well, all um, uh, Max 9s are now, well, have been cleared. Uh, by the FAA for uh, for a return to service. But, um, to be honest, that, that tug's been on there for quite a long time, hasn't it? Is he all right? Uh, Rohit Parkell, jumbos from the west over here. A380 folks, stand by. Watch uh, slats, there's a rudder check for you. See the split rudder on the 777. So, um, that's to basically reduce the amount of stress on the rudder. Gonna go for um, possibly elevator check unless they've already done it. This is what's commonly known as an F and F check, free, full and free movement, where the pilot will go through the flying pilot will go through um, all his um, flight controls just to make sure that everything's full and free, basically. Dustin Jackson gifted a membership. Thank you, Dustin. CPR. Here we go. Fire it up. have uh, Etihad, Qatar, um, or was the BA jet included in that four, not sure. So for 63, there's two Air India schemes, yeah, um, indeed there are. Uh, we've seen both of them here at Heathrow. In fact, there's, there's three, it's actually three, isn't there? Um, one is the um, uh, 
Steffi giving a shout out to Amy for the gift. Uh, yeah, there's the, um, oh, he's gonna left turn, Clyde. No. It's Vista, isn't it? The new one. Yeah. Yeah, interesting that uh, one of our members told us that the new the new livery, uh, the tail livery, is actually um, based on the what you see on the current uh, Air India livery, which is the Vista. Um, Aaron Gom, welcome back, Aaron. He's a returning member. Adam the Great four engines just doesn't seem enough power to lift her up. Well, yeah, that's something that's uh, up for discussion uh, in, a, in an upcoming on-air show that we're going to do. Anybody, uh, anybody watching now? We do now have a, um, a Friday show that we do. It's called On Air. It's from the um, from the office of Big Jet TV where we discuss the latest news or as up-to-date as we can possibly get. Uh, sometimes news is brought to our attention during uh, the show. And then, um, and then, of course, we'll have a main subject matter, like we did about the... Oh, that's your set. Yeah, that's your set, the other one then. Where? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's not plugged in, no. It's not plugged in, no. Okay, that's it. Stephanie Belson's. Uh, yeah, it's charged, mate, because I, I definitely, I, I always charge it up. Stephanie Belson's a brand new member. Welcome, Stephanie. Hope you're doing well. And Mark Howard has gifted a membership. Listen, if you're a new member, there's a lot of people who sit back there and don't um, and don't don't chat and. It, really it's up to you but uh, if you want to get involved in the chat or ask a question please don't hesitate good point the one thing that the new air and delivery is missing is the um, is the scheme around the windows I'd like to have seen that continued because it sort of like looks a little bit like it's well it looks like it's missing doesn't it is that gear gonna go up no nope, that gear is not going up gear um, doors are gonna close that aircraft has got a failed brake on it highly likely that it's a failed brake now the pilots will be um, notified of that um, because obviously when they uh, when they go for gear up the lever goes up normally they get three greens or uh, notification that everything's closed um, but no in this case in this instance the doors will automatically close and uh, the gear remains down and the reason for that is nine times out of ten I'm gonna say that's a brake that's failed um, so one of the brakes has not stopped the wheel from spinning and these brake these wheels are not designed or developed to be able to or want to spin when they're um, horizontal they are uh, obviously because of the weight and the load on the bearings and the brake system um, they rather have everything stopped so that they can uh, bring the gear up so for about two minutes normally uh, until that wheel has stopped spinning 
they will the gear will remain in the down in the extended position looks very odd doesn't it looks like um remember back in the old days you'd see the flight tests where they're doing a certification tests and um, just to be safe they keep the gear extended Dylan uh, Westung uh, I think I've got that right Dylan a very good day to you is a brand new member here on Big Jet TV you are more than welcome my friend great to see you uh, like I say anyone who wanted anyone who wants to get involved in the chat please don't hesitate to ask questions if I can't answer them uh, somebody else will on here and uh, who knows you may bring up something that um, w that was uh, that will become a uh, a subject matter during the uh, during the on-air show oh look at his big smile on his face oh listen to this look at isn't it see no alarm in the world will withstand the Trent noisy old Trent 8 787's gear I believe is wow it's still down that's quite a long time it's normally Normally around about two minutes that they will um, just have a little look there. Hold on a minute. Oh. big old loud American oh look at that see the wind um, definitely turning into a southerly now pulling that aircraft up off the ground um, left wheels first that was nice I think that Dreamliner is now gear up screaming Amy John Grin and mirrors Is that 26 year old Pratt and Whitney powered? Go on, son. Just to let you know, folks, just to confirm that that 787 will not be coming back to Heathrow. Um, wow, still quite a bit of a rudder correction going on there for that 777. Um, gear is now extended. Uh, gear is now um, back up where it should be, or up where it should be. And um, it's been retracted and the aircraft is on its way. So... Uh, it's quite a common sight, I have to say. Listen, look at those prats smoking away, man. Um, no, Adam the Great, just to confirm to everybody who's asking the question, uh, will that aircraft have to come back to Heathrow? Negative. Um, it is, like I say, quite a common sight, um, mainly on the Dreamliners. I, although I did see a, um, a um, Virgin A330 um, going out of, um, out of Heathrow earlier on my way up here that had extended gear it generally is just um, a one break normally just a single brake failure or malfunction in terms of uh, the, 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 the when when the um, when the gear up command is given and the lever goes up the um, the system basically breaks the wheels as well like stops the wheels from turning the 
the brakes um, will um, the auto brake system will 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 stop the wheels from turning. Um, front wheels, of course, do not have any braking system where they have uh, brushes or nylon stops uh, that are located inside the undercarriage bay that stop the front wheels from turning. Um, and um, and so as a result of that, they'll. The wheels remain, will remain extended, the gear will remain extended. So that Neo would have had to have undergone inspection. I'd imagine it's a relatively quick inspection for the, um, for the, for the, the wing cracks that have been found. Um, I don't know if, how many aircraft were, were found, but um, Obviously, a, a notification has gone out to all operators operating the NEO and the CEO with retrofit um, sharklets. Oh, nice now. Talking about Air India. Now, this looks smart, doesn't it? Now, she's got no window markings. It's interesting, isn't it? Look at that. Lovely. I like that. That's proper old school for me. Suffer 6-3. Used to love the alarms going off at Hackney Cross when Concord departed while I was waiting on, on the 81 or a 140 bus. Wow. Yes, I'm aware there's a 747 close by me, folks. Stand by. Big Red, good afternoon to you. Kuzro Alam, uh, one of our... Uh, one of our pilots on board Big Jet TV. Do like that tail livery on that Air India jet. sure how to pronounce it. Plignes. Uh, I think that's planes, isn't it? Um, but anyway, wow, perfect mix. We've got the Trent follow, first followed by the G90s and the Pratt & Whitney PW 4000s screaming emu. Um, Captain has got a preference for FOCs, uh, whatever, and then you sort of fall into a decision together, is that regarding the um, gear extension. Uh, Rick Freeman, photographer. Gonna jumbo right over the top of me, man. Rebecca Weaver, and the number above the uh, front wheels generally uh, indicates um, the um, ETOPS numbers, I think. I'm just gonna quickly grab this jumbo. Kind of looks UPS-y to me. That's a 400, that's for sure. Kind of looks UPS. She ain't trailing. Um, KLM. Somebody mentioning yesterday. Listen to this thing. Smart looking lufty jet. See? Come on, son, up you go. See it kind of all works together that uh, that livery, doesn't it? With the um, with the with the with the, the Ray-Ban style flight deck. There's another jumbo on its way, long range. Look at that. Unmistakable vapor trail. Or contrail. Condensation. Hey, hey, hey! Nice one, fella. Someone with a big jet TV off. Oh. 
Say hello, mate. Look at that for a hoodie. A uh, uh, beanie. Oh, oh, yeah, nice, mate. We'll have to have a game. He wears it for golf. Brilliant. Oh, it's Coletta Sarah Louise saying that was a Coletta jet. Was the wow? Is it gone already, or is that another one? It's not. Uh, is that is that the Coletta jet there, or is that? Uh... That's a different one, isn't it? I think that's uh, that's another one, and then I've got another one behind me as well which is coming towards me. Let's just get this, uh, looks like a Trent powered triple. Oh, Singapore Air Freighter was the first one, Levan 74. Oh! See ya, man. Someone who wears his, um, his, his beanie, his, uh, yeah. people watching hello everybody I hope you're doing well enjoying your Sunday or uh, have enjoyed your Sunday I guess some people uh, down the far eastern side of the planet are uh, into their into their Monday morning now aren't they hey uh, Greg Dillon at the air at your four o'clock Greg I've got it got a 3.30 coming out at me now first 7.47 Singapore, Matt Jeffrey, second one, Coletta, and the last one will be Atlas Air, and uh, there she is. Oh man, listen to this 3:30 firing up. She's got Trent's on, I think, or has she? Are they CF sixes, maybe. No, they're Trent's. Are they? Nope, they're CF six. That last one's gone out. Gutted, missed the brake dust. That was an early uh, gear up command there. Oh. jumbos in the space of half an hour they still rule the skies didn't they folks eh come on Kurt Ayer wishing you a very fine afternoon um, yes welcome everybody wow look how high that uh... wow she's got a real steep man oh Um, oh, there's another one coming.
It is he fool. Wayne, get out of here, James Beatwell. Screaming at you. Wind it up, son. Wow. this world. Wow, it is, isn't it? Look at that beautiful turn. Triple seven wing is just beautiful, isn't it? Very similar in a way to the 350 from that angle. Mario Borg Olivia has gifted a membership. Thank you, Mario. Oh, I'll just quickly grab this one. Where's the, um, Oh, it's 340. It's a 346, isn't it? Is it or is it jumbo? It's a jumbo, isn't it? Sorry, sorry, it's a jumbo. Or is it? Oh, it's a jumbo. Look at that tailplane, man. Look at the tailplanes. Unmistakable, really. Funny sort to wear. Yeah, she's. So what's the deal with uh, KLM and their uh, That must be a Dash 8, yes, Dash 8 in it. Or is it no, no, she's got winglets, look. Or is it? I don't know, I can't really say. I don't know what it is either, I don't know whose it is. Chitty, you got that the name of that fella who uh, who's who's um, hoodie we're sorting out. Might, yeah, might be watching um, Ken. Yeah. So yeah. What's, um, what's the deal, somebody mentioning in, um, when we were in ALD yesterday, what's happening with the um, E190, uh, the E2 jets that uh, KLM are operating? Haven't seen them for a while. Trev Line. Jill Baxter, Lufty 747-8, there we go, thank you, Jill. Yeah, please. Oh, um, you know what? I'll have a, uh, I'll have a, I'll have a. Rob Van Roy is gifted a membership. Him and his horse. Thanks, Rob. Oh, Rohit Parkell is ex, um, ex Etihad. On least to area, I did think that it may be, um, it may be, uh, you know, a, 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 a least jet. Just basically down to the fact that it's got no, uh, it's got no um, body livery on it, so to speak. Paul Malagrat uh, has gifted a membership. Thank you, Paul. Um, uh, Eric Tida confirming. Um, Greg Dillon, correction, 747-8, uh, Monkey Boy, 85, Nick B, Steph, Diane, 78. Uh, I don't know what Screaming Emu's talking about there, That's, uh, that sounds like an interesting discussion. Fail on you like after rotation. That's uh, not very um, welcoming. Emma, meow. Uh, Ian Morrison, Suffer 6-3. Kenny PJs, Beverly George, Scooby, Scott Thompson, Tom Chapman. Who was it who brought up the, um, um, the discussion point about the uh, A380 freighter originally? 
Um, I know that we, um, I didn't mention it, so I apologise. Was it Finn or something? Was it Finn who brought it up originally when we were down at uh, Toulouse? We've obviously discussed it quite a few times on the show, um, but Finn um, sort of like bringing it to our attention, Rob1965 has gifted a membership, thanks Rob, uh, bringing it to our attention about the uh, the um, A380 or the A380X um, program, was it called the A380X or uh, 38X or something like that? Um, but yeah, uh, Finn, I hope you were there. Um, it was down to you. Thank you that we sort of like brought that whole thing. And I had absolutely no idea that um, the uh, the freighter program with the A380 was actually. Um, Something that Airbus originally um, thought about when they were developing the A380, even FedEx and UPS putting orders in for it, or a letter of intent, I think, let's say. Um, because uh, back in prototype stages, obviously everybody's um, very excited and uh, want to get involved in the project. Uh, I want to be seen to be getting involved in the project. Hello, hello, here we go. Raptorx. That was an Air France A350. Thank you, Raptorx. Steve Batty. My son Alex is flying it today on first day to Singapore. There we go. Wow. Uh, David's gifted a membership. Thank you, David. Oh, look at this. Um, double bubble shot, folks. We only really get this with Emirates, don't we? Never had this before. Or have we? I, I seem to recall we have, actually. <laughs> Uh, ATC4. Uh, there are four different holding patterns around London Heathrow. Todd Chapman has gifted five memberships. Thanks, Todd. Look at that. Etihad and Etihad. Squeeze up. <laughs> Brian Pounder is gifted a membership as well. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, let's welcome him. Whoever that fella was in the in the beanie, he needs to contact me because he said he wears it on the golf course. So I'll uh, I'll take him on on the golf course. If you fan. Just for a minute there, you sort of like saw a big long elongated hump because of the white there, didn't you? Look at that. Look, looks like a big long jumbo, doesn't it? Because of the because of the scheme. At the white at the top, never looked at it like that before. That's crazy. Do you see what can you see? He's clear to go straight out. He's clear to go straight out. It's a fool. RD UK. John Bollock. Will the Etihad 380 go to the same gate as the one that's just left? Yes, John. Generally, they use the same uh, the same gates because obviously only uh, a number of allotted A380 gates here at London Heathrow. Another uh, airfield. She's going straight out, man. No messing for this one. DC-10. I've got one coming, thanks. Thank you. Jane Gould. Welcome, Jane. I think, Julie, if you come in fast enough, you should, uh, you should be able to come in and go straight out. Freeman. Uh, 
fella in the uh, in the beanie. Uh, Aidan Campbell, Etty had 380, number two worldwide, tracked by 1,280 people right now on Big Jet TV. Is it Big Jet TV viewers or uh, I don't know, but probably a, um, a high percentage of them, I would imagine. Uh, Robert Ward, Gary Dixon, Daryl Riley, wow. Shall the Big Jet family try and get the inbound slinger to number one? Uh, Kathy Williams saying, uh, going to be a big lurch to the left for this um, Etty had jet. Normally, but she might go right. Uh, oh, nice Air Canada triple. Who fancies a little bit of GE90 startup, folks? If you do, and it's uh, is that your age? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, nice one, mate. GP's in the house and I've got my headset. Just a wave, Jilly! <laughs> oh, start up. What's that? Oh, cool man, happy birthday. What's well, sticker, mate? See you, Aiden. Chris, he just wants to see all of got for that. Trick was starting up over there. Tony Duty, Beverly George. Yeah, yeah. Go right, go right, Eddie. See you later. Cheers. It's the Air Canada to Vancouver. Egypt Air also over the other side. They're at the starting blocks. Lenny Pasiglia, nothing meaner looking than an Air Canada triple. Kind of right in a funny sort of way. Pretty gnarly, isn't it? 
with that uh, trash panda look about it. Mel B, uh, welcome back, Mel B. Uh, Aidan Campbell, CX7, still a long way away. Yeah, well, uh, apparently she's delayed, uh, and as a result, she's going to be coming in uh, during. Um, she's going to be coming in on the right-hand runway. However, don't be surprised if they bring her in on the left-hand runway. Suffer 63, how many of the toothpaste Air Canada's are left? I wouldn't know that, but uh, there's one of them there. So, you know, a mixed bag. I don't know if uh, maybe Air Canada went strong on their um, repaint scheme and then sort of like pulled off, pulled back a little bit because of financial constraints, because obviously every uh, operator um, uh, suffering through the, uh, through the crisis and maybe able to save a little bit of cash um, by uh, and diverting that cash somewhere else maybe pilot recruitment Who knows? anyway here she comes James McKelvey, thank you, sir. Got no 38. 380 coming out. Corundin Dutch Airlines 350 cruiser blinds. Is that Corundin over the top? Wow. I didn't know they had that. Red engine cloud. Wow. <laughs> I don't think you'd complain if you were, Jilly, would you? lovely to do something with Heathrow but it will just never happen because it's you know and understandably from Heathrow's point of view you know if you're if you're if you're an individual airside at Heathrow you need you need an escort or you need to be a um, you know somebody who works at the airport or, or whatever it might be CPR 1234, ANA Star Wars 787 9 cruiser to the west. Not heading south, is it? Not it. That's not her there, is it? That's not her there, is it? That looks like a Dreamliner. That might be it, you know. Here we go, she's coming this way. Qatar 380, lining up folks. Here we go, another super jumbo. Yeah, she's glinting in the sunlight. I don't think I got a great shot of that.
did we get it? Did you see the uh, um, the livery on her, folks? I don't know. What's the um, Emirates pilot caller? His chubby something or other, isn't it? Chubby love or something. Chubby girl, that's it. Brake dust out of this. Been quite a long taxi. There it is. I think that's a double, a double bubble um, um, subject matter. Um, on an upcoming on-air show. Uh, the A380, reason for it only having two reverses on it, but also the braking system. Um, oh, look at that drift turn, man. <laughs> yeah! He's literally pulled the handbrake on there, man. Eighty meters across, bigger wingspan than the length of the fuselage, folks. And if you ever get the opportunity to sit on one of those things, whether it's at a static air display or um, whatever it might be, and you're fortunate enough to fly on it, then um, you know. and you get the opportunity to choose your seat, which you can do. Because when you, uh... oh, listen to her starting up. One stop shop, no refueling rig for these guys. Todd Greenwell, good night, Big Jet TV from Perth. Big day tomorrow. Uh, Ted, uh, Todd, sorry, uh, a very good night to you, my friend. Well, good morning, innit? Perth, is it? Uh, let's just have a little look. Brisbane 12. Oh, so I don't want any of that. What's that all about? Got Perth on there? Terrible bit. I'm bleeding geography, so I don't know where I'm watching. Little A220, here we go. which is same as Okay, well I better put it on me thing fong so I can know exactly what time it is. Screaming Emu's um, platform, the A220. We might get a bit of a funky shot here. Firstly, with the contrail, uh, but I think that other one's a little bit too, yeah, a little bit of a funky shot. 
Oh yeah, here we go. Oh! Delta 339. That was a beautiful spool up. Isn't it amazing that Rolls-Royce stuck their neck out and gambled with it with with Airbus um, for the uh, the Trent 7000? Um, but I'm guessing, in a way, it was sort of like you know a, a good opportunity for them to de keep developing the big superfan engines, um, you know, uh, which is why they, you know, made a big step up from the Trent 700 to the Trent 7000 especially if Airbus turned around and said look mate we're, we're going to give you exclusive um, on this uh, Rolls Royce would have been like well yeah we're not, not going to let anyone else get hold of it look at this big old lump coming down here so 10.44pm in Perth he's off to sleepy no nice got a big day tomorrow mate fan good afternoon everybody hope you're doing well Sunday the 28th of January nearly already a month in before you know it deck the bells with tears of holly <laughs> oh Was making some noise, mate. Tony Rivers. He says, uh, just saw a magic radio clip where Rylan admits to watching Big Jet TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 there's another one, folks. Look at that. Look at that. That's the. Um, yep. Yeah. He, we've had that before, old Rylan watching Big Jet TV, innit? He's tweeted before. So it's uh, Dreamliner number two, folks. And Rylan, mate, if you're watching right now with your big, uh, beautiful ivories, then uh, hello, mate, how you doing? It's always a lot more. His, 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 his beard, it's very black, innit? It's like, it's like me. Remember that day when I put that... Um, what was it called? That stuff on my beard, and I had to just for men. I had to uh, I had to stay indoors for like three days because it stained my skin. Uh, Rylan, hello, mate. How you doing? Good to know that there's uh, there's some um, people out there. Who are... Oh, go on in. I'm jealous of his ivories, by the way. much better is it I mean I know okay a set of Trents growling away like the ones that are on that uh, American triple 200 that you can hear humming away literally behind me Lady Hull is a new member welcome Lady Hull 
and Chuck Tannehill has gifted five memberships. Thanks, Chuck. Best name on the internet, Chuck. J Mank. Rab H. Valerie Dickens, good afternoon. Brian Stewart, CPR, Paul Skilling. Welcome everyone, hope you're doing well. Oh, you can hear the hum of those trents there. And I've listened back on the show, on my on my TV, through my stereo stereo. And I can hear the hum of those trents. Okay, a bit of a standoff at the moment. <laughs> Chirpy bird. The uh, Diddle Terom due out at 250. There we go. So we'll get the um, smallest little aeroplane. Although saying that, I think the ATR's on the ground at the moment as well. 747, best thing to fly ever. And then leave the grey white and it looks much better. Not sure what that is. Um, Rolls Royce engineer. Not so much. It's a crappy design, just improvement opportunities. Uh, Andy P, good to see you, Rolls Royce engineer. Marcus Critchlow, uh, good afternoon to you. Mark K, Egypt Air, Livery Hazar, Bikal Pan, Richard Hodge. Uh, Karen Langley, good afternoon to you, thanks again. A great show, Beverly George, Michael K, Trevor Russell, Aidan Campbell. I heard Boeing shares have gone down about six percent in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it will fluctuate when it's gonna do that with, with Boeing. Um, it'll pick up, it'll definitely pick up, but let's this face it, you know. Um, they've been hit and they've been hit hard. Um, I mean, you know, everyone goes through it, all aircraft manufacturers, uh, Airbus going through this whole thing with the uh, hairline cracks in the wings found uh, with some of their um, single aisle jets. Um, and one of those is actually, this is what we're talking about, a retrofit or, um, you know, it depends on when the, when the fin, when the sharklet was fitted. You see this, the, the winglet here, folks, see this winglet on this CEO jet? Powered by the old IAE engines. That's what's known as a fence style winglet, a fence winglet. Uh, one of the original uh, styles that were introduced on the, um, the Airbus A300 um, and subsequently um, put onto um, the A320s, etc., etc., the early models. Also, um, shown on the um, on the a380 as well uh, just a little bit late in the day for shark clips on the a380 but this is a ceo with shark clips i call it a hybrid jet so these shark clips were either fitted in the factory or as a retrofit and as a result of that these aircraft all of these aircraft with shark clips ceos and neos um, are having to be inspected that's the shark clip right there Will, even though it's a small jet, that wing will flex. Um, and it may be that uh, just at some point on that wing, I'd imagine it's outboard of the uh, of the engines, uh, the uh, the manhole inspection. Um, oh, we might get a bit of a funky shot here as that uh, thing smokes its way up. Oh no, she's gone. Um, yeah, the um, hairline cracks found in, in, in an aircraft, which obviously sparked a, um, an inspection directive from Airbus and the CAA. And Whoa, go on then. Here's a set of trends. coming back sorry folks I'm coming back because we have an American 200 777 200 with Rolls-Royce and it's going out intercept what's up people
is such. That's such a surprise and always so great to watch, man. And here. Now people might be asking, why is that guy using such a, sh a short runway, uh, less runway than um, than the other aircraft, the other big aircraft? Well, that's um, when the pilots are, uh, when they board the aircraft and they get hold of their iPads and put all the information into the flight management system, um, that will then calculate how much runway they need. And that's based on the amount of fuel they've got on board, uh, the weight of the overall weight of the aircraft, um, and it will say that you can, if you wish, um, use an intersecting point on the runway. Um, still use quite a lot of runway there, but it just means that they can probably get out a little bit quicker and push in front of other aircraft. engines are the best. Well, you know, each to their own. I didn't realise it was that late. A380 is going to be the last out. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get a slinger on this runway boat. somebody mentioning there that they do still uh, rotate at the indicated um, uh, rotate speed which is the normal rotate speed it doesn't mean that they can rotate any slower really um, it just means that they can use less runway to get to that speed um, and not only that it means that they can push in front of other aircraft literally Lisa Stevens loving her new Red Star. Beautiful cafe, 350, 1000 touching down. David Beeston, good question, David. in general when an engine fit onto any of the pylons uh, not really Dave and they, David they are pylon specific uh, it's not a sort of like an easy switch over retro fit it's like trying to put a V6 in a you know um, put a V8 in a V6's um, engine bay you need to make massive modifications okay final one out here we go
yeah, yeah. It's it's all about um, yeah. It's it's courtesy and uh, etiquette in it. It's, it's it's etiquette. There is no real um, there is there's etiquette within media, but there's no real etiquette within you know within media channels from what I can see anyway. Well, there is there is. It does go in there. I mean, we use etiquette. We have a lot of etiquette, but some people don't give a damn. Uh, Savage Maggot. <laughs> what a great name. Um, there must be a point when the runways have a lot of rubber from landing aircraft. Yes, indeed, Savage Maggot. Um, very true. Uh, in fact, I remember, um, funny enough, going out uh, on an intersect departure. And um, we, we intersected to the point of the runway, which is about a thousand foot mark. And um, it was uh, amazing uh, the, the amount of rubber that was laid down. They do clean it. They have some very efficient uh, cleaning machines, which use, uh, hold on a minute, let me get this big turn for this 380, man. Is he gonna make a big turn or is he, is he, is he westbound? Yeah, he's just, uh, that's a little tiny turn. So we we'll see this start up for this 767 with the United States. Okay, that's it folks. We are on runway 27 right landings now. So uh, best of both worlds for you. Lenny Persiglia, thank you Trev Lyon. Savage maggot. I <laughs> uh, wouldn't like to come up to a savage maggot in a, in a, in a dark alley, that's for sure. BA380 to Miami, Raptor X, thank you. Hear that? Adam the Great, Dirty Birdie, Chrissy. Suffer 63, am I wrong or will there be no passenger 318 commercial version flying once Tarom ends? Uh, yeah, Air France are still. Oh, look at that beautiful Saudia new livery in the uh, in the um, in the background over there. Isn't that beautiful, folks? Um, yeah, we've seen the um, Air France 318s at Heathrow. Um, even, even, even recently, it has to be said. Yeah, yeah. Paul Skilling has gifted a membership. 11 foot tall, the winglets on this 767, folks. <coughs> Start up. Now that's a little bit of, um, uh, a little bit of um, oil that's literally been left in the combustor, um, in the combustion chamber of the, uh, of the engine there. Of course, the uh, the hot end of the engine when they fire that thing up once she gets um, once she gets moving, and they uh, Peter Makunda. Good afternoon to you. Fancy a little bit of uh, landing action, folks. We've already got um, a nice, healthy stack lined up. Thank you. Making a very interesting point there. Uh, there are, there is machinery. I've seen uh, a little while back. Yeah, there's, uh, there is a, there is a machine that basically cleans runway surfaces, but also um, is so high powered in terms of its uh, intensive, of it, in terms of its high pressure um, uh, intensity, that it will, um, it will also. You know, clean lines and uh, and unspent fuel in the combustion chamber. Thank you, RR engineer. Unspent fuel, not oil. <laughs> not a little little puddle of Castrol GTX. Then, no, no, sorry, he's right. Thank you, RR engineer. I will make a point of that. So, uh, generally, only with a cold start. So here we go, folks. They're lined up. Car DTZ, Finnair on the line, then British Airways 320 after that. 
is a 350 BHF. Okay, here we go, folks. We're in about uh, 150 yards from the 1,000 foot marker, I think. Finna first to come down. See they are. Uh, CFM engine. Again, we talked about the IAE engine um, going through to the 2040s potentially. A uh, big F and F check for that uh, for that pilot. Um, those CFM engines are certainly going to be the, doing the same. Rudder check. May do a um, spoiler check. Left wing, then right wing. Unless he's already done it or she's done it. There we go. Of course, the uh, flapper on also being used as uh, as a a brake element on the wing. Once the aircraft is on the ground, that will uh, obviously no longer be used to turn the aircraft, but it could be used as a ground spoiler. Aviation addict. First show since Miami. There's something that's um, that's mentioned quite a lot on the show about the reasoning behind um, uh, Heathrow switching runway operations at three o'clock. It's just for local um, uh, uh, noise abatement. Is it's been something that's been, uh, it's called the Cranford Agreement. It's not something that's sort of like, you know, um, it's, just, it's just a, um, a handshake, a gentleman's handshake. Oh, I say Canada. Yeah, very good show in Munich with the fire department. Yeah, there's not a lot we haven't done, is there? You know, um, yeah, <coughs> great, great, uh, very informative show at, um, we've both got the long version of it, the live one, if you want to look at it. Was it Munich? It was Munich, wasn't it? Um, and, uh, and also a shortened version of it as well. Very interesting how uh, obviously they used to use fuel. Smooth! Wow! Yeah, we did a piece with the fire department at, um, at Munich, which was, which was great because uh, they, um, But, but didn't we edit it and then and then put it back up? Car DTZ A380 841 Singapore Airlines uh, 9 Victor Sierra, uh, Sierra Kilo Zulu. Uh, she's inbound. If you fancy a little bit of A380 touchdown action, folks. 20 wheels. It's 20 wheels, isn't it? It's 20 wheels and I think it's 16 of them are braked. A 
to Taron. Jets have been withdrawn, have they? Um, what are they going to? Are they going to Neos? Are they going to 220s? I'm sure I read something somewhere about uh, Taron's uh, order for new aircraft. Uh, Aidan Campbell, Cafe Pacific uh, Cargo 747 Freighter. One hour, 28 minutes. That's our closeout, folks. That's going to be our closeout. So if you want to hang around for the next one and a half hours, uh, we're going to get all these touchdowns, of course, amongst other stuff, uh, anything happening around the airport. We will uh, we'll catch everything that we can. But um, interesting that it's now almost a, uh, it's almost a southeasterly, Jilly. That sock is blowing southeasterly. So we might get... Lucy McCluskey, 747-8, one hour, 30 minutes. Thank you, Lucy. Um, the pool man captain. Good afternoon to you, pool man. Um, let's have a look. I'm looking on my flight radar now, folks. If you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna see what I see, six out the slinger. Um, then just go to flight radar 24 in your app store. Um, search it, download it uh, to your phone or device and um, you can download a free version. You don't have to pay for it. There are, there are paid versions of it. Um, it is definitely worth the, the paid version. It is one of those apps that's worth every penny if you see what I mean. So, um, uh, But for the time being, if you just want to test it out and see what you get, then um, most definitely it's worth it's worth having a look at. You can track an aircraft from anywhere around the world. Well, you see he's landing into a little bit of tailwind here. And also there's a tiny crosswind element in there as well. I can feel the wind from the uh, from my left, which is um, you know, which is not a good sign, I have to say, because that would basically indicate that they might change run switch runway operations. Uh, there's your sock you see there. All right, mate? Thanks, man. Awesome. Cool, man. There's a few stickers for you, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay, we've got uh, Slinger should be coming into view. Here she is, look, here she is. Oh yeah, gear just about to come down. Copy GP. Okay, I've just, um, at the bottom of your Flight Radar 24 app, you will see a, li a, um, a line of um, settings or uh, options. You've got settings, weather, filters, alerts, and playback, which is another good thing. If you want to see when an aircraft came in, or like sometimes, it's a great opportunity for us to look back at a particular air, airfield and see um, if we're going to go there, what was happening there the previous week or even the previous night. Um, so it, it, it's a great opportunity to have a look. This is a China, Air China 350, I think. So now I'm coming all the way out of there um, from, to London Heathrow. Wow, it's busy, man. It's busy. Um, okay, yeah, from Beijing Air China 350. It was the uh, face mask express, wasn't it, uh, during the COVID crisis. Pool man captain, lady hot slinger. She's not six out now. She's uh, two out, I'm probably miles behind. Uh, Diesel 13. Robert uh, Ward, A380, eagle in the skies. Interesting, okay. Gear's just down. Always looks very odd. See the mid gear, the body gear. Now it'll, it'll come down and slide backwards. See? 
looks like it's having a little baby, doesn't it? Or uh, something else, but uh, here we go. Uh, Tony O'Reilly. I was working at Jobs Fair event on Wednesday. I spoke to the Airbus Broughton's, Broughton, sorry, staff and mentioned how it would be good to get you to a show they seem keep. Uh, trust me, Tony, I'm already on that one. Uh, been working on the Airbus show for uh, the best part of three years now. Kind of given up, to be honest. our ride down to uh, down to Sydney in March it's creeping up on us isn't it 60 days didn't you say Jilly six weeks today blimey Sarah Louise Nayad handsome baby 350 uh, society red I will be watching BA289 land in Phoenix tonight it's taxiing right now wow RD UK, Nigel Cox and Matt Cooper. Helen Clapp, Ian Morrison. Yeah, we're, we're, we're live, we're not post-production. Uh, Points Guy is, is a post-production facility where they obviously go in there, they film it, they come back, they edit it, it goes to Airbus, it gets approved, they take say, no, take that out, we don't want that bit in there, you've got to take that out, and la 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 la. It can take months, but we do everything live, folks. We're not interested in doing post-production stuff. So that's the difference between us and everybody else. Nailed it. Look at that. Can you have 20 flipping wheels or tires should I say and hardly make any any smoke at all and you've got a slight crosswind element that is one nailed down pilot man car DTZ super loud super smooth beak out pan Kathy uh, and the birds flew on the slinger in October on my way to Melbourne beautiful aircraft Ian Morrison John Grinham smooth indeed couple of great landings there man Matt Cooper <laughs> Paul Jones oh is it Mandate for UK, did I count 22 wheels on the A380? You may well have done 20 in the mains and um, two up front. Non-braking 20, uh, 16 are braking wheels, uh, four non-braking. Back sets on the, on, the, um, on the outboards and the inboards, I believe, but just remember folks, it's not one disc and one caliper and one pad, one set of pads on, on these aircraft in, uh, uh, brakes. Even these small jets here. That's why you see British Airways very, very infrequently using their reverses. Um, sometimes it, they do, depends on the conditions, of course. But um, look at this beautiful 350. Man. But because uh, each, each assembly 
has a huge braking system, something that we're going to point out during the uh, on-air show, um, which I love talking tech, folks. If you're, a, if you're in any ways into, into your tech, then, um, then, then come and join us on the on-air show um, every Friday, live from Big Jet TV Studios. <laughs> what else do you call it? Not exactly call it that thing, it? No. No. Studios. Nice nacelles, mate. Nice nacelles. Northern Studios. <laughs> this, uh, I think they're using a lot of reverser uh, because there is a slight uh, tailwind element. Only very, very slight. Look at him. Uh, look, look, look. Look at that. Yeah, I think there's something that we need to consider doing in it. Yeah. in Manny. Good day to you, my friend. It says drain mast at the lower part of the engine. There's actually a couple of them out of the 350 of the XWB engine. It's actually um, on other engines as well, but it's just not as, as, as noticeable on other aircraft. But that's just, um, that doesn't happen during flight. Um, all the valves are closed off on that, but once it's uh, on the ground, either before it goes out or uh, after it goes, uh, after it lands, um, Um, so yeah, it's a uh, it's a drain mast that's got a number of different elements that it uh, uh, that the um, oh look at a big old Singapore slinger man. Wait for me. <laughs> see what I talk about the uh, different elements on the engines. You see the uh, the rear slider panel there. You've got the the forward nacelle, um, which uh, so it's three different elements on that engine in terms of its cowlings. What's that? East to west. What? Really? What north of me? East to west. Oh, really? Okay, I won't see it yet, will I? I won't see it yet. Will I see it yet or not? Really? So I should see it coming towards me. Well, I can see a, a, a two engine. Is it south of me or? Uh... I can see a two engine. It's trailing. That's not it there, mate. That's a 737. Only at 30,000. Oh, is it too soon, is it? What a beautiful sight to see that, isn't it? Is that coming from the west? That's not it, is it? Oh, sorry, coming from the... Oh! South, isn't it? Yeah. Suffer 63. Great thing about the 380s, you don't get a bad landing, it just nails it perfectly. Whoa, I don't know about that Suffer 63. We've had a few on here, mate. Uh, that's where the original Bosch came from, wasn't it? Um, with the, uh, I think the word Bosch um, was uh, from, from Qatar with their 380. Um, so uh, I hate to be, uh, I hate to be.
Good looking Eater Jet 321. Hey. See the interior of a, interior of a Ferrari, man. That's just like. Hey. You break my heart. Just a great looking interior on that turn. Three, four, four class cabin inside that 321 Neo. Um, I know a lot of people will disagree with me because uh, two of the cabins are almost identical, but I can assure you um, um, that um, that's not it there, is it, Jilly? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. That's it? Is that it? No, hold on. No, no, it's not a Galaxy, is it? No, sorry. I thought I saw a tea tail there for a minute. I thought I saw an enormous tea tail, but I don't know now. Hold on a minute. Are you sure that's not it? No, that's, that's, that's two engine and that's twin engine. I think it's about the same sort of, the right sort of, oh, look at that. Missed those two. There he is, there he is, I've got him. Left to right, that's it. C5 Galaxy, folks. And that's not just a Galaxy, that's a Super Galaxy as well. Where's, where's C5 when you, wanna, when you wanna see him on our chat? Wow, look at that, man. Yeah, 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 I can, I can, I, I'm ready for that. Cargo Lux 747. It's the 38,000 foot show. Somewhere up there. Let me get me bearings here. Oh, there she is. Big, beautiful bird, man. Can't really see her that well, unfortunately, because of t some. Pilots need the Sport Air Ray Bands. 8,900 people tuned in. Hope you're doing well, folks. 327 here in London. Hope we're all doing well. Crazy we caught that C5 man. Where's he going? Is he, where's he come from? Ram, Ramstein or something like that. Oh. Oh yes, yeah, she is. Am I going to get a better shot of her up here? Oh yeah, baby. Wow, these guys are landing long, man. Look at that. Oh, I hope they don't switch ops. Yeah, just have a look on Amazon, Jilly, just see if there's any hot air balloons available. See if we can get it delivered tomorrow. Ferrari bus. And on the great 36 fares and feet, Cargo Lux 747 Paul. Uh, Aidan Campbell, far range shots have been amazing today, clear skies, yeah. 
by Chris Tucker. Or oh, Trucker Chris, sorry. He's playing on our 45s yesterday. What is it? Oh yeah, she's flying through the um, cargo luxes. Yeah, there yeah, she's flying right through the contrails, man. Yeah, check it out. Wait for this, folks. She's getting a little bit of weight to her mind. She's probably got quite a lot of uh, separation, altitude separation, I'd imagine. Just have a little nosy about, to have a look down at number 34, because I think they've got a new an engine maintenance going on there that poor old dreamliner she's still there look i mean those engines must be on a uh, serious um lufthansa 777 200 freighter following the same lines as cargo lux slightly off center but uh look at that even be a relatively new freighter with of course they were the uh three years old she is um operated the md11 of course for many years um i think the md11s that they operated were ex swiss air and then converted to freighters for um lufthansa and then um and then uh sold on um or it's the other way around they were passenger jets with lufthansa uh cx7 cafe pacific cargo 747 crossing over lake lucerne in switzerland i know where that is because i've walked over the bridge at lake lucerne Lefty triple seven, number six on flight, radar HGC. Freight makes money every day. It's where the revenue is at, autopilot saying. Yeah, indeed. Um, in fact, that's why sometimes you see some of these operators uh, bringing different aircraft into Heathrow on their regular daily schedules uh, because they've, they've um, booked out the belly of the aircraft because it's the belly freight that makes the money. Uh, the revenue that they make from passengers is very, very small, very marginal. Believe it or not, even if you do have, uh, you know, 70 or 80 people all paying five grand a piece for, uh, for, um, for lay down seats, it's still uh, you know, the cost of fuel uh, and other contingencies that they have to work with. Uh, the freight is something that's, um, you know, because uh, generally uh, belly freight in, 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 in commercial operations um, is ad hoc. Um, it's not usually sort of like, you know, uh, commerce freight and, and, and the such. Immediate look left in, in terms of aircraft recognition, 737, bang, right there with you. She's got scimitar winglets. I'm guessing that this is a Max 8. Oh, really? Okay, we need to sort of like check in on that, don't we? See, now remember the other day, folks, that we had the Dreamliner coming in with the Air Royal Air Maroc? Heavy braking, heavy braking, man. Um, there's a perfect example the other day where we saw Royal Air Maroc operating their Dreamliner um, and today bringing their 737 Max into town. Um, so there you have it. It's, uh, it is just a case of um, some hubs are, um, are, are uh, uh, where um, a lot of um, it sometimes can be perishables but generally it's ad hoc freight you know car parts tires um, uh, relatively large pieces of freight oh listen to that thing going out is that triple yeah Lee 
Bowley flying to Dubai in August. People, do you think this will be possible with all the unrest in the middle? Yes, it will, Lee. Oh, blimey. The day that uh, Dubai closes, we can all kiss goodbye to flying. Put it that way. <laughs> Oh, right on the keys, mate. Slapped it on the thousand foot mark. Unintentional aero break. Uh, Brian Stewart, yes, indeed. All uh, FAA have now given the, uh, the green flag to, um, to United and um, Alaskan, yeah. Uh, United and Alaskan um, have now been given clearance by the FAA to uh, to put their 737-9 Maxes back into into operation. Um, it actually started on Friday, so they will be um, hastily um, putting those back in. I mean, in terms of the inspection, it's just literally the interior panel needs to come off. The door plug itself doesn't need to come out. It's just an inspection of the uh, of the bolts, and I think, to be honest with you, the actual um, the, the the length of time that it takes. It's uh, mainly down to um, down to the removal of the uh, the cabin panels, uh, because they're quite you know they're quite a, a, a difficult thing to um, to remove. You know, obviously the um, maintenance teams have all the uh, have all the necessary tooling and so on and so forth. DTZ JL777 from Haneda, um, inbound JA740 Juliet, thank you for that. Rohit Park, Algeria, I wonder why Lufthansa has flown two brand new Airbus A350 straight to storage. Uh, Rohit, that is because they, um, they're they unable to, um, well actually the cabin fit out, um, the folks who fit the cabin out have uh, have had problems with delivery. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Because we've seen um, we've seen these operators like British Airways taking delivery of brand new 350s and literally within within hours um, uh, operating the aircraft um, straight from delivery. Of course, some of the aircraft are fitted out um, at Airbus at the facility. Yes, yeah, supply chain issues with the uh, with the um, with the cabin fit out is the problem for those uh, Lufthansa 350s um, and when we talk about supply chain issues we basically talk about raw materials uh, for the manufacture of those uh, particular products seats um, uh, IFEs um, are just it's different alloys different um, materials um, fabrics leather uh, all of that kind of stuff uh, it only takes one of those of those supply chains to um to to to, uh, to fall back um it just is a, 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 a um i mean lufthansa must be like wow man we really you know we need these aircraft because obviously they're operating um at a at a schedule whereby they're trying to um uh, replace aging aircraft like a330s and and stuff like that you know um but uh, at the moment i think lufthansa are a kind of you know, they they did um, they did maybe foresee these issues, which is why they've continued to operate such a big old fleet, not getting rid of their 747s, um, 747 400s, 747-800s. And so on and so forth. Um, you know, Lufthansa did a great job, man. Very uh, intelligent bit of you know i don't i don't think i think they they um 
they listened to themselves rather than the advisory team, which is unfortunately what I, I'm not sure 100% what happened with British Airways, but I think they panicked. I think British Airways either panicked or they were just like, oh, we've been waiting to get rid of these jumbos for ages. Here's a good opportunity. Everyone else is doing it, so why don't we do it? Well, you know, if I was on the board of directors, I would have said, whoa, 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 hold on a minute, hold on. Why don't we just put them in storage like they did and just hang on to them for a few more years or, or for at least another year and see how the market sort of like comes back. And I can almost guarantee you, had they done that, uh, they would have been operating those um, those 747s. Uh, I might be completely wrong, folks, um, but it is a great shame, isn't it? Everyone I talk to um, regularly says, anyone local to Heathrow anyway, says how much they miss the 747s. And um, for the time that we were able to see them here at Heathrow, um, it was uh, it was it was great times, wasn't it? days when I'd be standing up here and they would be lined up ready to go out and all you'd hear is this beautiful noise of the RB211s. Oh my goodness me. Mirrors, Margie Ann, Ian Morrison, Paul Skilling, Mrs. Flufage, HGC, Triple Seven Paul. Would love to see a five door triple in Royal Jordanian livery. Yeah, Ken, if you're watching, um, we're trying everything we can for your hoodie. We are on hoodie watch. Missed it, didn't you? We saw Pinky earlier on. Did anyone see Pinky when I when I picked her out? She had a little uh, a little um, excursion. Steph, I have to admit, I did shed a few tears watching the 747 fly at Heathrow for the last time. I think we all did. Autopilot. It's a lot to do with the crew roster pay as well. The 747 400 left seat had got up to £545 per hour. Left seat around £375. I know left seats making $350,000 a year. Wow. That's pretty crazy, man. So, yeah, well, I think all British Airways pilots had to take a pay cut in some way, didn't they? Um, and to be honest with you, I'd rather have a job flying a jumbo jet and get paid, you know, 60 70 dollars less an hour than um you know or or downgrade the payment it's all down to the individual isn't it um if you're a pilot who loves flying airplanes um and doesn't just see it as a job um if it's a if it's a career for you but you love doing it every time you get up to go fly an airplane uh, you're like, wow, can't wait to get there. All the sort of like, you know, um, the preparation around it and all that. I know the novelty may wear off in some ways, but but you know what? For me, I don't think it ever would. I've been doing this for seven years now, and I have to be honest with you, folks, the novelty is still as strong as it was the first time I put that phone up against the fence and got booted out by the old Bill. You can't stand here and film that there. All Nippon. Maxine Haynes is a returning member. Welcome back, Maxine. Aidan Campbell, uh, Cafe Pacific 747 freighter update. Uh, just entered French airspace. L'avion de Fraichet. Chrissy, seriously considering a career change. Finally doing what I always plan to do. Yeah! Nice! A 
love the way the, the tyre smoke rotates around that front wheel, uh, front tyre. Just for that split second, looks pretty cool, man. Sleazy rider. Richie Henshaw, seeing lots of new names today. Great to see you all, folks. Please don't hesitate to come in and, and uh, ask questions. Um, give us info, even if it is Googled, we don't mind that. Um, rather the information be um, correct. Uh, so wherever you want to pick it up from, obviously if you get info from a, from a, from a third party, then you know, um, just notifying us as, as to the origination of that, uh, that information is always nice. Uh, Richard Aston, A380 number four on Flight Radar 24. Which A380 is that? Do we have any more? Let's just have a quick look on Flight Radar. Um, oh, we've got a 380 just joining the back of the stack now. Emirates, um, it is EK31. I might be able to pick that up actually, turning into the back of the stack. Okay, coming in behind that one there. From the left, from the left. To the right. Was the 8340 designed to what, Jelly? No, not really. It was a sort of like standalone platform, wasn't it? Really, the A340? Uh, because the A340 was kind of... Um, initially, the A340 300 was based on the A330 platform. Um, just a bigger wing. Mexel TV, welcome to first class Mexel TV. I'm just keeping that shot there, folks, because from your left, um, any moment now, um, well, actually, in around about another 10 seconds, you will see a big, lummoxing super jumbo. Rachel is a returning member. Welcome back, Rachel. EK31 coming into shot from your left side. Any moment now. You know, I have to say, you know, numbers really um, do speak for themselves and we are just very um, privileged to have um, all of our organically grown subscribers. We are, what is it, 400 away from 340,000, Jilly? 351 subscribers away from 400,000. Um, we don't beg for subs, we don't pay for them, we don't do any of that. All our subs are completely organically grown and we're very um, we're very honoured to have all of those, each and every one of them uh, subscribed to the channel. Um, all we ask is that if you do subscribe to the channel, um, it's always a good idea to, um, to turn on your notifications uh, never late putting their gear down and never really early putting their gear down on Emirates. Very, very strict procedures with Emirates. This looks like Turkish is 321 Neo. Um, so yeah, if you are going to join as a subscriber on Big Jet TV, please make sure you turn on, turn on your notifications and that little bell as well, you know. Um, just gifted a membership thank you Avro um, yeah yeah 
yeah, something like that. I'd keep them for sentimental reasons because you'll probably get there, you'll probably find that they'll get. I would either keep them for sentimental reasons or donate them to a uh, to a to a um, to a, a museum somewhere like uh, possibly somewhere like Brooklands or something like that. Because you'll probably find they'll make what what forty to sixty pounds in a in an auction or something like that. Um, certainly not enough to sort of like change your life, that's for sure. Um, not only that, but the chances are they'll go to someone who's either gonna, you know, you know, who's got a little bit of fat. Depends really, you know. Williams, thank you, Matt. Here we go, EK31 at a thousand feet. Uh, Richie Henshaw, I subbed and joined as a member after spending hours on Sunday afternoons enjoying the company. Everyone is so nice and welcomingly, genuinely fun watching. That's fantastic. Thank you, Richie. Dubai 380 next in there, Trevinia. Um, so she is currently at 500 feet. Trevina, sorry, Trevina. Approaching minimums. Continue. Minimums. 100. There we go. Bring it in. Seventy, sixty, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. Retard. Nailed it. I've got to be honest with you though. What was it? Was it Etihad that absolutely buttered it? Sander Prinsen uh, gifted a membership. Thank you, Sander. I think it is. Sander Prinsen. That's very kind of you, my friend. LA girl. Lady Hall. Great to see so many new people today. 399,747 <laughs> subscribers, folks. Wow. Um, leave it there. <laughs> yeah, nobody sub. John Grinham, great shot. Sarah Louise. Oh, Slinger, that was it, Sarah Louise. Rachel's gifted a membership. Thank you, Rachel. Um, yeah. The Slinger was the smoothest touchdown um, from an A380 I think I've ever seen. I've got to be honest with you. I'll have to look back at all the other thousands of touchdowns that we've had. Uh, can we get a 747 update please, folks? CX-7 Cathay Pacific. Let's hope after all of this they don't bring her in on the southern runway. Nats, if you're listening, I know we do have a lot of friends up there at the, uh, in the control tower. Please bring her in on the northern runway. Uh, Aidan Campbell, uh, 45 minutes out, folks. This looks like Malaysian 350. Nice, sink it. Yeah. Love it when all that weight uh, gets transferred onto the oleos. Oh, what now? Aiden Campbell, 44 minutes out. Slinger best landing than Emirates. Steph, yes, indeed. Uh, Susie, thank you. 44 minutes. Echo 6, Bravo. Ian Morrison, Gary Boak, CX7. 1638, she's due. Deborah Speller. Uh, Stephen Remy, 8,800 people watching. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? We're going to get the 9,000. Um, welcome, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we do have 9,000. Uh, Jill Hitchcock, um, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for rejoining. 
Big Jet TV. Great to see you folks. We're live Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh, we also um, travel uh, around the world, literally. We can say that we are world traveled now. Um, we're obviously off to um, Sydney in March. We, um, we're off to, uh, we just got back from Miami. We usually do a US trip once a month. I can't remember the last time we didn't, um, unless it falls out of our schedule. Um, but uh, Miami we did uh, in January, and uh, this month, in, well, this coming month, February, we're already planning uh, for Leipzig, which is a really decent uh, cargo hub. Um, get some pretty exotic freighters in there. And uh, San Francisco at the end of the month as well. Ice hockey fan. Give a shout out to Jill. Of course, you need to um, appreciate that these uh, the wheels are not turning when uh, when the aircraft lands. They don't sort of like pre-spin them up or anything like that. Uh, Jason White, sending messages by phone while watching Big Jet TV. The sound of Jerry coming through my phone and TV sounds like a PA operator at an air show. Oh dear, oh, I don't want to be um, tarnished with that brush. Andrew Kadas, welcome back, Andrew. He's happy he's going to gate, look, this Cafe Triple. A big smile on his face, look. <laughs> Those are uh, pitot tubes and angle of attack sensor uh, at the front of that aircraft, folks. Two angle of attack sensors, and uh, or, or one angle of attack and two pitot tubes. One for the uh, left seat, one for the right seat, standby. Um, pitot tubes uh, but when you zoom out it looks like a, um, he's got a big smile on his face didn't he so the 777 always happy Tony Bruce do the airlines still lease the tyres the pool man captain's gifted 10 memberships thanks pool man that's very kind of you my friend um, leasing tyres well you know what uh, interestingly enough, the majority of tyres that come off these jets to be remoulded or retreaded um, is the um, is the big way that they uh, they they um, refurbish these tyres. They generally, uh, because they're um, the, the side wall of the tyre, uh, there's a lot of technology goes into making these these things. You know, uh, she's not starting up, by the way, folks. Jack Spratt, uh, welcome to Premium Jack Spratt, uh, Heidi 693010, welcome to First Class, brand new member, welcome Heidi, um, welcome everybody, but yes, uh, most of these are, cool, but most of these, um, most of these tyres are remoulds or um, retreads, should I say, I think that's the, uh, this is, Aristana. Did I say Leipzig? Sorry, I meant to say Liège, folks. I meant to say Liège. I do apologise. It's Liège, not Leipzig. Although Leipzig is a is a big um, hub as well, and also Leipzig is the home to um, Antonov, I believe, and they're uh, one, two, four. Um, maintenance division. Again, another um, uh, um, um, uh, branch of. Um, uh, oh man, hold on, hold on. Look at that. Emirates on time, isn't it? Yeah, uh, uh, handed out the olive branch to Leipzig. Uh, quite some time ago liked the idea it's always you know when you talk to someone at these at these places they're always very enthusiastic the trouble is 
when they take it to the next level uh, that next person is usually like you know either a miserable get or um, isn't interested or can't be bothered um, it's amazing the amount of um, quite people who are high up in um, in the media um, uh, uh, sections for for, for, for for airports and companies who are just lazy sods I've got to be honest with you man trust me I come across it literally on a weekly basis um, and that's why to be honest with you I've kind of given up you know um, it does amaze me when I when I when I approach these people who are responsible for the LinkedIn or the Twitter account, and they get like you know, you know, five thousand views or or some in some cases like mediocre views, and it's like, man, we can give you thousands of views, and you know, we can give you a, you know, we'll pay for everything, we'll we'll pay for all the travel and the accommodate. It won't cost you anything. Oh yeah, sounds great, brilliant. Yeah yeah yeah. However, it does happen from time to time. Remember Chris uh, from Fract? Remember Fract when we did that show with them um, out in um, in um, Houston? Out in Houston, we flew all the way to Houston. We um, we paid for, for for the flight and the accommodation and everything, rental, everything didn't cost these guys at Fract a single bean. Oh, actually, was it Fract? Was it also Fract? No, it wasn't Fract, was it? Fract was in, um, that was Antonov, wasn't it? Fract was Milan Malpensa, wasn't it? Chris is now left, and so that's it. We'll probably never do anything else with Fract, because he did try with the new girl, and she was all like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Trouble is, they just, you know. It's a one-stop shop, isn't it? Wow, look at this, two Cafe Pacific. Um, triple set. <laughs> it's like we've rewound it. That's a bit odd, isn't it? They've taken it around the corner. No, hold on a minute. What's going on here? I'm a little bit confused. Where's that cafe jet gone? That can't be it there. Is that it there? No. Have they just... No. <laughs> I'm completely confused now, mate. What's that BA380 doing sitting over there? She's not, oh, she's on time. Okay, here we go. 3.30, immediately check out the big droopy undercarriage on her, folks. It's the kind of giveaway when you see a 3.30 like this. Heidi69310 is a brand new member. Welcome, Heidi. I've got that one. Thank you. Um, is it Heady? Sorry. My apologies, Heady. Welcome. So this is what you feel when you're flying on this jet, especially if you're over the wheels. Bang, first set comes down, then bang, second set comes down. And you feel it, man. they do man of course they do you know I mean how easy is it to drive down to Broughton yeah how easy is it to drive down to Broughton um, go through their um their their, their process of, uh, of, 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 of 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 security and all that kind of usual stuff that we've we're, we're very sort of like um, clued up on and um, you know we've got uh, we've got all the certification in place and you know, public liability insurance and all that. Stick the camera there and film a beluga coming in, uh, opening its nose up, loading it up with a set of uh, A350 wings, closing the nose, get out onto the flight on, onto the flight line, and film it taking off. How cool would that be? No, no, no. It's not going to happen, mate. It's not going to happen because um, some people just um, are. Uh, you know, Korean triple seven by the looks of it. Car DTZ, thank you, car DTZ. Had a great contact at uh, at Airbus. 
uh, at Broughton, at Broughton, sorry. Uh, unfortunately, he's now moved into the uh, the um, military side of uh, of the media, and so he's no longer got any influence over the commercial side, and therefore that's the end of that. Um, did speak to the new person, but again, as per always the case. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not hard at all, man. I mean, it is a simple story. It's not like, you know, it's not like we want to sort of like go in there and infiltrate the uh, the accounts department and uh, film all the people at their computers. It's like, you know, film this shot here. Don't film there to the left. Don't film there to the right. Just film this shot. You know, I was prepared to go down there. I was prepared to do a, um, a live recce to our channel um, without going public, just a private recce. So that the uh, so that the um, so that the the, the, the the management at Airbus could see it and go, yeah, you know what, that's absolutely fine. Oh, hold on a minute, just one little thing. Can you not film that? No problem at all. Easy street, done and dusted, you know. But no, 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 didn't happen. You're right down there. Oh, bless! How cool is that? Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much. Oh. So there's a, 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 a lady who is visiting from LA. She's British, but she lives in LA. And she loves watching it because it makes her homesick. Well, no, it doesn't make her homesick. It stops her from feeling homesick. Yeah, you know, you just give up, don't you? After a while, you're just like, you know, whatever. It's like um, somebody said on the stream just now, Autopilot 300, Troop 7300 EI is the best aircraft of the modern Boeing era, in his opinion. God, yeah, you know what? With all the, you know, the, I mean, the, the 787 with its uh, electrical issues and uh, ongoing sort of like... Um, problems in terms of well, it's, it's getting old now isn't it the triple the 787 and the um you know i've flown on a few 787s now that are, that, that are sort of like um um coming of age so to speak and they've um you know some of the um the the, the tint the window systems are, uh, are not operate not operating properly you know they are they only half um dim you know, they only half dim as opposed to full dim. Yeah! Nice! Beautiful, man. Beautiful. I love the 777 wing, man. Especially the 300. It's such a gracious bird, isn't it? Seen that for a while, have we? Nice 767. Aidan Campbell, I've been on both many times and like the trip and 787 equally. Well, to be honest with you, when you're flying on the thing, you hardly know the difference. You don't really notice the difference in terms of the, uh, the comfort factor and um, another, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, I've flown on a, a, some proper old uh, 777 200 beaters, like real old ones. And once they're in the air and once you're flying, unless you're um, flying in cattle class, of course, um, where you're all squashed up with uh, everybody else, which is not favorable, I have to say. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> I have to say, I'm never, ever gonna do that again with British Airways, uh, flying the back end of one of their 777s. No thank you, sir or madam.
Chrissy, loving the Dalton ribbon livery. Um, breast cancer awareness, I think. But yeah, you never, uh, you know, you you wouldn't notice the difference between a a brand new A350 or a triple seven two hundred. Once you're in the air, if you close your eyes, in terms of the the the, the sound, um, you know, obviously there's there's only so much you can do in terms of. Um, um, the cabin noise and uh, it does depend on where you're sitting on the aircraft of course not you know massively but the most of the air that you're hearing is uh, is the air rushing past the fuselage or going or, or, or over the wing you know that uh, that noise that you're hearing is generally uh, the engines and the air flow of the uh, uh, over the aircraft around the, the, um, the fuselage etc etc Tell you what, it's getting a bit chilly now, isn't it? Now that sun's gone down. Sandra Wall has gifted a membership. Thank you, Sandra. Oh, yes, I did, and I did get an update. Yeah, stand by. Just putting a headset on. Stand by. I'm not putting a headset on. I'm putting me. Um, I'm putting me. There we go. There we go. That's it. Uh, Rab H. Jerry had a dr model Dreamlifter on Friday. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I wouldn't like to call... I don't call any aircraft ugly because even though it's an inanimate object, is that the right way to describe it? Um, it's still an aeroplane, isn't it? And you've got to show it some love, haven't you? You don't want to call a Dreamlifter ugly, do you? It's just an odd-looking aeroplane. It's like, you know... Um, compared to the Beluga, and I'm not meaning that I prefer Airbus over Boeing. Trust me, um, I'm I'm a fan of both of them. Um, but in terms of the lines of the uh, Beluga, it just seems to be more sort of like aesthetically pleasing in terms of its in terms of its shape. Um, whereas the 747, oh, listen to that. The, uh, the 747 um, uh, Dreamlifter. If you look at where the um, where the uh, God, it's a bit of a race going on there, isn't it? <laughs> if you look at the the, the, the makeup of the um, of the Dreamlifter, um, where the uh, the 747 fuselage, the 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 the, the, the you know the um, the actual 747 fuselage meets the um, the, uh, the, 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 the large uh, <laughs> cylindrical section, the, 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 the cargo uh, compartment section of it. Um, you'd be amazed if you zoom in and look at all the bolts. It is bolts. It's not um, fixings that we normally used to see, you know, rivets. It is literally bolted. Um, very, very sort of like, you know, um, beefy. I have to say, it's the, uh, you ain't going to pull that thing apart, that's for sure. James McKelney, very professional, entertainment and educational. Wow, uh, I'm glad you, uh, you, you've mentioned that because obviously I'm very conscious of, uh, of whether people enjoy the, one air, the, the on air show um, just because, you know, do we carry on doing it? If it's just sort of like, you know, people aren't really interested the, the thing it, what it is is a weekly catch-up uh, for aviation news and um, you know discussing other sort of like technical um, things that we've talked about during the week you know um, uh, on the Wednesday show you know on the midweek show so we've got the Paul man captain gifting there Roxy Simmons has gifted a membership thank you Roxy and Dan dare 146 has gifted a membership Listen to this lovely old 767. Lenny Pasiglia. Oh, head on shot. Listen to those lovely old.
Look at the rake on that thing, man. Seeing off this blue, not seen any yet. That's much. Must, uh, we've got uh, we've got four on-air shows, two episodes, and two that were dedicated to a specific um, uh, uh, um, subject. First one was obviously the um, the Japan Airlines 350 incident collision. Wow, this guy looked like he was going to go around there. Um, then we had the first episode, and then the next episode was a. Um, was a specialist show based on the 737 MAX incident and then um, the last week's show. So we've had two on-air shows um, and two um, subject-related shows. You see, I, 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 um, I changed that to in terms of the title and so on and so forth. Plane Spotter 22's got his phone case and what an amazing quality, really good. I, I tell you, um, we don't have tap. I have to say, on our, um, on our, uh, on our, um, in our shop, we don't have tap, folks. I will not have tap because, firstly, I don't want to have, um, you know, um, people. I wouldn't want to have uh, people constantly writing into us. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? We had somebody who had a problem with their their, their bobble hat the other week, which we found very, very surprising because we've sold quite a lot of bobble hats and uh, never had any feedback on them. And obviously, it's a quality control issue, and it happens from time to time, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got Ken. I think it's Ken who had a problem with one of it with with, with a hoodie. Uh, again, something that we're, um, we're, I'm not going to let you down, man. I will not let anyone sort of like, you know, um, we will always resolve an issue. We won't leave people hanging, man. And fortunately for us, it is very, very rare that we get an issue with quality control. Uh, we have nothing to do with it. We don't, you know, Jilly's not out there stitching and, you know, <laughs> she hasn't got a little printing table, you know, it's, uh, it's all done through YouTube. See the bleeding thing. Um, CX7 update, please. Ranji, any show planned at Mumbai or Delhi? I'm not at this stage. Wasn't there a reason why we couldn't do Japan, uh, India? He's been waiting there a long time, hasn't he? Uh, cool. with a bobble on it. <laughs> a tip for Jez White CX7 over the English Channel. Thank you. Oh, listen to that. Yeah! 
semi sharing machine. It wasn't a, it was an electric one, I think. Foot <laughs> pedal operated. Yeah, but they were the best ones, weren't they? Because you could really control it then. Yeah, 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 yeah. There they go, mesmerizing sunset. Tit for tat is uh, company rhyming slang for hat. Tit for, for all proper companies. Well, you just call it a tit for. Dreamliner 37873 out Travina Denny, thank you. Mad Cat Lady, Wookie, Roxy Simmons, Pom Pom Hat. Yeah, I guess that's what uh, the Americans call it, isn't it? The Pom Pom. Uh, Chirping Bird, Cafe 747 over the channel, 26 minutes out. That's our closeout, folks. And it is 4.20 right now, so uh, we are extending our days. They're extending and getting longer and longer. God bless them. Valerie Dickens, sunset looking good. What was it we saw yesterday, Chili? That beautiful green um, uh, triple seven. Who was it again? Um, beautiful. Once a week it comes in, we believe. Turkmenistan's triple seven. Almost retro looking. Spaceship, baby 350, whatever you want to call it. It's a shame they didn't put um, they put, didn't put uh, shark clits on the uh, 220, isn't it? Uh, she's only got um, fence style winglets, but uh, shark clits would have looked a lot better. Would have finished that jet off beautifully, uh, much like the um, the raked wingtip on the E190, which is a um, beautiful looking thing, man. I prefer the E190 wing over the 220, but um, here we go. Ben Thompson, thank you, Margie Ann, LA girl. Get a tight shot on this touchdown. Oh, he went flared up there a little bit, didn't he? James, thank you, Glennis. Aaron Thomas, car DTZ. Good to see so many people getting on, uh, getting involved in the chat today. New people as well. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you to all our current members for in, um, for, for welcoming the new members um, and stay involved, folks. Uh, I know you can't watch every show. I know uh, people have different schedules and so on and so forth, different um, time scales around the world. Um, Paul Skilling, CXM will approach from the southeast. Uh, Nigel Armstrong. Wow, Nigel, thank you, sir. Gifting 20 memberships. Thank you so much. Ruth Petit. Um, Bobo. Jill Blakeney. Listen to that reverser, Jill saying. Festen Pants. Or Panche, or. Valerie Dickens, never see the Swiss air larger plane like Chips and the for only the dinky ones. Um, Valerie, do we do see Swiss air have operated their A330s into, into Heathrow before? Um, even back in the day, we had their three. Uh, we, we've also, um, a cafe uh, apparently, the freighter has been given 27 right, folks. So uh, there we go. Thank you, Martin. 
Nigel Armstrong. You are a hero. Thank you, sir. China. Bobo. Lisa G. It's gone long again. Look, look at that. Floating it. Yeah! Wow! Jules Harris has gifted five memberships. Thank you, Jules. What a fantastic sequence going through that, isn't it? Touchdown, boards up. A triple seven, they could change the Sharklet design on A220, but would it save anything fuel wise? Um, probably not, triple seven. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, you'd have to develop a, um, a retrofit um, Sharklet to start with. Wow, look at that beautiful 767 going up. Oh man, look at that. Oh yeah. Ronald with wings has gifted a membership. Thank you, Ronald. 767 going into uh, into its uh, in for a little makeover. Uh, Aidan Campbell, uh, 15 minutes out for CX7 Raskas. Good day to you, Raskas. Beverly George, James McKenney, Scott Thompson. Uh, Rab H, the Queen will be incredible. Please make it 2-7 right. Rab, it's already on the cards, my friend. She has been given clearance for runway 2-7 right. Um, continue approach. Where is she now? Let's just have a little look. Okay, she's uh, still a little ways out, isn't she? Is she over the... Um... Oh, here she comes. She's um, she's from uh, coming in from the saft, like somebody said earlier on. I think another 220. That's uh, just uh, north of Horsham right now. Wow. subscriber who's uh, living in the frigid north of Ottawa who's a um, qualified engineer uh, fr and and uh, qualified at Loughborough I'm imagining that's Loughborough University where Johnny went uh, between Guildford and Horsham now CX7 it's a little bit worrying that she's approaching from the south I have to say folks um, from the southeast because that would be a preferred routing for 27 left um, but let's hope she uh, climbs a little bit more to the more to the north rather than staying on that track for 27 left but didn't you say did somebody just say that, they, that they've been given clearance clearance for um, 27 right so Martin said 27 right Gary Fellows has gifted a membership. Thank you, Gary. Mutinous Mike has also gifted a membership. Um, the Queen will be incredible. Yes, indeed, it will be. There we go, Mutinous Mike. Thank you, my friend. James McKelney. Come on, son, stay right where you are. We just want to get the jumbo. Mind you, I'm saying that, if the, if the sun's just below the horizon, I don't think it's going to be. I think we're going to be a little bit... Um, uh, the jumbo needs to stay, because as soon as you get past that point, everything turns dark, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know, though. I don't know. It might be... A, yeah, we should be all right. Should be a great shot. Now I can't see anything. <laughs> Lady Hole, loving the Swiss air. Paul Skilling, Raskas. 
NGS 0123, do you have another international show location planned? Yes, NGS. Um, the next one is overseas, it's going to be in Europe. It will be at um, Liège, which is a freight hub. So we're hoping to see a lot of action from Liège. And then at the end of the month in February, uh, at the end of February, we're looking at San Francisco. Triple seven, Paul, were those 767 gear doors open? Something big rumbling out of two seven left. Aiden Campbell, CX7, already number one world tracked worldwide. How about that, folks? Big tall tails over there. Valerie Dickens was the largest commercial plane at Duxford. Duxford has in the museum. Um, B-52 in it. Isn't it the B-52 um, in terms of military? Uh, oh, largest commercial plane, did she say? Um, ooh, VC-10? Interestingly enough, speaking to somebody, also that engineer, ex- um, BOAC engineer from Heathrow worked on the, uh, the, the VC-10 and the Tridents. But actually, Paul from ARD was who brought it to my attention that um, apparently um, the VC-10 uh, was equipped with four reverses or two reverses, depending on which route they were on. Um, high altitude routes where the air is thinner, they needed four reverses. Um, whereas on the um, on the 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 the, the sea um, the the, 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 um, the normal sea level um, routes or whatever where they didn't need four reverses uh, they had two reverses funny enough <laughs> Gary Dickinson has upgraded uh, to first class. Thank you, Gary. Nice livery on this 787. Like it, like it, like it. Of course, they've got a Concorde at Duxford as well, haven't they? Got Concorde at Duxford. Um, Duxford is a great place to visit, folks. Um, they've got a um, US hangar and a, um, well, a military hangar, uh, and as well as, of course, um, the, um, the other one, <laughs> which is a European airspace or whatever hangar. Um, and of course, some outside exhibits as well. 28 kilometers out, thank you, Aiden. TCC Sleazy Rider. Um, Sleazy Rider at CX7 has just gone over. over one. Um, she's just joining the back of the stand. Oh, there she is, man, there she is. Oh, baby. Not the best shot in the world, but because uh, of the heat haze or the haze. But look at that beautiful jumbo jet, ladies and gentlemen. No, they're not. Cheetah, Cheetah, the um, General Electric, the GE NX engine, and the Rolls Royce Trent 1000 are the two exclusive. Um, ah, you little. Ah, oh, mate, hold on a minute, stand by. Oh. Ooh, 
let's just get a listen to that. A pinky! <laughs> Wasn't expecting him to come out to play, but there we go. Yeah, photo bomb by Pinky, man. How cool is that? So that C5 Galaxy that we saw is apparently uh, experiencing technical issues and has uh, turned around. Where's she going to go? Lakenheath, probably, I'd imagine. Or maybe not Lakenheath, maybe... Um, Dan Dare. Sweet shot. Well, it was good while it lasted anyway, put it, put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> It does look like Pice and Pat's van. And this black and white cat. If we, if we were to make a children's book about, or a children's series about Heathrow, Pinky would be a, definitely would be a very, um, a very influential part of the story. Neil in Dorset. Welcome back, Neil. Suffer 6 3. Let's see if we can get, uh, get the Queen on there now. A little bit poppy, a little bit poppy. I won't go to Coningsby, I'll go to either Lakenheath or or um or Milden Hall, one of the two. Is that gonna come anywhere near here? Is that gonna go over here? Is it? Oh K okay, camera, come on, I'm trying to work with you man, work with me! couple of seconds really wow with a jumbo landing Joe Lizzie yeah, he might have a plane fly yeah. if we had a model of if we had a if we, if we had to do a model of pinky to scale it to the to Heathrow, uh, to, to Staines International. It would be a high size of half a grain of rice. It would literally be half a grain of rice. Well, just get a grain of rice, put a couple of little black marks on it, and some, paint it pink. No one will notice. Here we go then, folks. This is what we've been waiting for. Seven forty seven dash eight freighter with the Gen X engine, four Dreamliner engines.
Gary Fellows has gifted another membership. Thank you, Gary. We are near to the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. 8,800 people tuning in for that beautiful jumbo jet. Thank you um, for tuning in to the most beautiful aeroplane in the world, it has to be said. Um, okay, we love all our 350s and our 777s, etc, etc, but you know, she holds a special place in all of our hearts. The jumbo. And a definitely, um, for me, the Mark I front end on it, which uh, shows it as being a um, both a, a, a true heritage uh, jumbo jet, but also with, with the freighter front end on it, you can't do better than that. Uh, even the Dash 8, I'm not a big fan of the Dash 8 um, uh, passenger jet in terms of its length, its sheer length, uh, the top deck sort of like um, disrupts the look of it. Uh, but that to me, even though she's a big long stretched bird, it just looks beautiful, doesn't it? With that, with that single, that lovely old Mark 1 hump on the front of it. She is the one and only. Sorry. <laughs> uh, right, folks. Well, there we go. Thank you so much. Apparently, we do have the um, uh, the uh, the C5 Galaxy, which is making its way back this way. We believe. Uh, whilst we're just packing up. Uh, if anything does happen, I'll let you know. But anyway, thank you everybody for tuning in. Really appreciate. It. Look, my bobble out. There's nothing wrong with it. trying to rip it off um anyway there we go folks uh yeah there we go uh right okay well, listen thank you everybody for tuning in been a great day with you once again um thank you to everybody who came and said hello um the lady who lives in los angeles um who watches the london heathrow shows um thank you to that young kid he's 16 years old thanks to that fella who brought me a bar of chocolate um the fella who was uh, who, who played golf in his in his beanie um contact at bigjet.tv um let me know and i'll uh, I'll, I'll take you on just as long as you're not a 21 handicapper all right um and you wallop it 300 yards down a fairway not having any of that um, but anyway thank you to everybody who loves their aviation and loves the channel thank you so much really appreciate your company thank you jilly once again uh, trish who was here i believe um and thank you heathrow Give a big round of applause to London Heathrow, ladies and gentlemen, all the amazing pilots, cabin crew, people who work on the airfield, Pinky, all that mob, all the uh, mechanics and engineers. It might stop here at 11 o'clock at night, folks. That's the uh, that's the shut-off point, but everything keeps going uh, to keep these aircraft moving. So listen, thank you once again. Really appreciate your company, and we'll see you uh, on Wednesday. See ya. Next up. Okay, folks. Just so, chilly. Just do a, lot, a final check. Just do a final check for that uh, C5. Just do a final check. Well, just. <laughs>